Good evening and welcome to the session of education webinar series jointly organized by ACM India and I6CSE. ACM India started this webinar series for the students and the professionals from academia as well as industry with objective to provide some really engaging and useful online sessions. I am Gitanjali Kai, working with Pune Institute of Computer Technology from last 19 years and associated with ACM India from past nine years. So before we start, I would like to give a few instructions as usual about the webinar. The audience is in silent mode all the time. You can log in your questions into Q&A window and the questions will be taken at the end of the talk. We will try to address as many questions as possible but if we will be limited by the time uh, time uh, available with the speaker, then maybe you can mail it to the speaker. And uh, further, since this is ACM initiative, I would like to brief you about the ACM and especially the activities of ACM India. Main objective of Association of Computing Machinery is advancing computing as a science and profession. ACM brings together computing educators, researchers, and professionals to inspire dialogue, share resources, and address the field's challenges. With the ACM membership, you will, you will be part of world's largest computing society. Out of 1 lakh members worldwide, about 10% 10 10 of them are from, or I'll say more than 10% are uh, the students. So since uh, majority audience is students, let me highlight some student activities from uh, about the ACM. So ACM India is spread across the country mainly due to its chapters. We have 20 professional chapters and 230 plus student chapters across the country. As a chapter, you get access to ACM's Distinguished Speaker Program and ACM India's Eminent Speaker Program. You can invite any expert from these programs and ACM takes care of travel. So both the programs are available on virtual platform now due to pandemic. So we also have best student chapter award, which is recognition of the activities done by the chapter and also carries a cash prize. This year's winners are first prize to PICT ACM student chapter and runner up is uh, to the PCCOE uh, ACM student chapter and honorable mention is Chitkara University. Again, uh, ACM India organizes summer and winter schools for students in different research areas in computer science. Faculties for the schools is drawn from prominent academic institutes and industries. The special interest group in India organized national level conferences and symposiums like now, course Comed, uh, now the announcements of the Course Comed, different initiatives uh, and the call is going on. You can have a look at it on website. Then ISEC is another uh, initiative and the Compute, which is initiative again of the ISEC CSE. We have student scholarship program to attend conferences. ACM India Coding Contest is another initiative that provides platform to test your coding skills and grab the attractive prizes. We have something special for girls, students, ACMW, which works for the empowering women in computing and have many initiatives for girls, students. We have Lady Ada programming competition and hackathon for girls, students. We also have one of the summer school exclusively for girls, students. We partner with Anita Vogg Institute for Grasshopper Celebrations India, the largest gathering of the women professionals. Now let's move towards today's session. So uh, today's session, it is around the healthcare and now the healthcare care became basic need like cloth, food and shelter. That is kapda roti or makan. So now it is kapda roti or makan and health. So topic of today's session is design of healthcare 4.0 platform modules. And it is none other than uh, Dr. Yan Vishwanadam who will be uh, taking this session. So it is my honor and privilege to introduce our today's speaker, Yan Viswanatham. Uh, so sir is INSA honorary scientist in the computer science and uh, automation at the Indian Institute of Science. From 1967 to 1998, he was faculty at the Indian Institute of Science. 
that is IISC. Professor Vishwanathan was professor and executive director for the Center of Excellence Global, Global Logistic and Manufacturing Strategies in Indian School of Business during 2006 to 2011. He was deputy, deputy uh, executive director of the Logistic Institute Asia Pacific and professor in Department of Mechanical and Production Engineering at the National University of Singapore during 1998 to 2005. He is recipient of the 1996 ISC Alumni Award for Excellence in Research. He was conferred the Distinguished Alumni Award in 2009 by ISC. He was awarded the uh, 2012 Professor S. K. Misra Memorial Award by INA. He is Fellow of IEEE. He is Fellow of Indian National Science Academy, Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National Academy of Engineering, and the World Academy of Sciences. Professor Vishwanathan has made, made significant contribution to the areas of manufacturing, logistics, and global supply chain networks. He is the author of four textbooks, nine edited volumes, over 240 journals, and top tier conference papers. His current research efforts are on uh, use of new technologies for future supply chain network design using blockchains and smart contracts and design of competitive business models. So such a, a great profile he has. So welcome Dr. Vishwanathan. We are really honored to have you and over to you, sir, now. Sir? Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you, uh, Chetra, very much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, SEM for inviting me. I would like to thank, in particular, uh, Raju Shaudi, uh, Chetra, and Itanjali for um, making a lot of efforts to uh, get this um, uh, a seminar going. And the one I'm going to, as, just, as Gitanjali has already mentioned, that uh, healthcare has become uh, very important nowadays uh, after uh, the COVID-19 last one and a half years. So but, uh, that is where uh, I was uh, interested in applying some of the business model techniques for healthcare. So what I'm going to do today is to go through, apply some of the principles that we have developed for global supply chains, as well as industry platforms to the healthcare sector and uh, design a healthcare system, which is applicable in times like this, where physical contact is not possible, where you know, people cannot go to a hospital and so on. So that is my aim here. So let me uh, uh, start with uh, the, the platform here. You can see the design of healthcare 4.0 platform models. And uh, that is the one. So I will first define what is called health, what is healthcare 4.0. And then we know industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and so on. So I'll define what is healthcare 4.0. And it is sort of health that is accessible remotely. And it is health that can be detected. And any, any uh, problems can, that can be detected remotely and, uh, and so on. So this is the, you use all the, new technologies uh, that uh, all of us are familiar, like IoT, Internet of Things. Internet of Things is called Internet of Medical Things in the healthcare sector, and then robots, drones, and all that, all those things can be used for healthcare sector. And I, am, I want to tell people that this is not uh, uh, just a seminar, uh, this one, but I am, there are a lot of startups, 5,000 startups in India itself, and there are a lot of companies which are implementing these things already, although we may not be very familiar with this. The second thing I will do is the 
current healthcare infrastructure in India. What is the current healthcare? All of us know this because we go to the hospitals uh, and, and deal with uh, the doctors and so on. But healthcare, health is more than hospitals because if you look at it said, from a business angle, health business is almost 10 to 20 times more than the hospital, uh, this one. And then what are the new innovations that are changing the healthcare industry? And I'll talk of platform business models. And this platform, you must be aware, must be must be already using some of these platforms. The platforms are like Amazon, Uber, uh, then you know Swiggy. These are all uh, platforms which you which you use for various purposes. And you want to, I want to design a platform for the healthcare sector. So like uh, you have Uber for uh, uh, ride sharing. You have Amazon for uh, buying things retail. You is it possible to have a platform business model for uh, the healthcare sector? for this. And there are some startups, which are, you must have heard of Practo and others, which are doing part of what I'm saying here. And then India needs a healthcare service uh, a revolution. That is the final uh, the conclusion that I'll have. And uh, there is, uh, uh, I would like to mention that the government is already very active with its healthcare. There are a lot of, uh, initiatives that the government has uh, initiated. If you want to start a startup, then you know government can provide funding for this. So what is healthcare 4.0? We have, uh, this is the picture for healthcare. You must be knowing, you must have seen this. There is first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution. This first industrial revolution is the introduction of mechanical production facilities powered by water and steam, that is the steam engine. And afterwards, through introduction of mass production based division of labor powered by electrical energy and so on, that is the Henry Ford's mass production system. And third one is industrial uh, production three, industrial revolution three is using IT and so on. All of us are familiar with SAP and other things which are being used. And we are still in this kind of uh, revolution now. SAP, a lot of companies, all IT companies are in terms of uh, this. And now the, uh, the industry 4.0 is cyber physical systems and so on. Now, one thing I would like to mention here as because I want to compare this with healthcare. I want to, here, this is end of 18th century. This is start of 20th century and start of 70s and it is today and so on. So you can see this revolutions take time. You know, sometimes it is like centuries, sometimes it is decades and so on. So this had to be planned and this becomes a connected world and so on. So in the connected world of today where we have all kinds of uh, mobile internet and so on, it may be possible to do this much faster. So if you look at the healthcare uh, uh, 4.1 to 4.0, you know, if you, you must be remembering that the doctors used to go home and then see the patients and so on. And then there is also, then came the, uh, uh, images like, you know, you take the x-rays uh, uh, and so on, and then digital tracking has come in 91 to 2005. And afterwards, the healthcare, the EHR is electronic health records system has started, wearables and other things were implemented. And this has started in 2016 to 15. 2006 to 15, but uh, this is not that we are not familiar with all this. And now the Yantcare 4.0 is EHR systems with the cloud computing, fog edge computing, big data analytics, artificial intelligence, and real-time access and all that. In other words, 
Now, if you, when you go now to the to the doctor, the doctor sees your digital record. If you have a record, and you'll say, "Oh, well, you know, uh, the, this this is the blood test, this is that test, this is ECG, and you have this and so on." And this that data, whatever data that comes in from the blood tests and all that, it comes as data and artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms can detect what your disease is. And depending on your longitudinal record, in other words, whatever you had, your lifestyles and all that, depending on all that, you can, you can basically detect the disease. That is the basically the healthcare 4.0. So, but health is more than healthcare, you know, because current focus, uh, when you go to the hospital, what is the focus? Focus is disease treatment and building capital intensive high end physical infrastructure, building hospitals. But the, this is that once you have the hospitals, hospital costs are, are, are going to be the physical infrastructure. So that is going to be the focus on how to maintain this and also the disease treatment. But future health, future health, health 4.0 is on healthy lifestyles, vitality, wellness, primary and secondary prevention, and early diagnosis, which also includes spiritual, mental, and emotional components. In other words, you could do yoga, you could do exercise, and all those kind of things. So you want to prevent those. And for example, we know in the COVID case, uh, you know, you want to prevent the, the access to, to uh, COVID by having all kinds of uh, uh, this one, like wearing masks and so on. So, and also you want to diagnose very early by like heart diseases or something and get the treatment. So the health focus of the future is trying to prevent the disease through health lifestyles. And you have spiritual, mental, and emotional components are also taken into account into this. So that is much more than what we are talking of today here. So your platform, which we are going to, I'm going to uh, tell you, has takes care of all these kind of things. So digital healthcare ecosystem-based platform that includes both incumbents and non-traditional healthcare players in the future business model. Now, I'm talking here of business model because this is like a management uh, 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 seminar. A business model is what you have uh, is, uh, you want to have hospital is a business model. You want to have hospital, you want to make money, you want to, uh, you want your customers who are the patients and the doctors to be happy and they get the valid treatment and so on. So digital healthcare system-based platform. Incubates means the current doctors and non-traditional healthcare players. We are the non-traditional healthcare players. Startups, you have the yoga centers, you have other kinds of uh, things, healthcare, uh, spiritual, uh, this one, and all that is the future. You have to include all those people. And more importantly, you should include also the software players, in other words, the APIs and, and others and the developers of various technologies and which apply to digital healthcare. They should be a part of the ecosystem because it is very difficult to do all the things both physical, mental, and other health, all these things by healthcare or a hospital. It has to be done by a group of people. And when you have a group of people, that is called the ecosystem of this. And that and it should be based on a platform. Platform basically uh, orchestrates the ecosystem and so on. Now let us go through this. So what is the future? So according to me, the future is, you will find digital medical platforms, online medical consultation, smart hospitals, health management using big data analytics. 
So all that you have is your electronic health record, which contains from birth to today, all the records, all the decisions you have, all the tests you have done, all those things are there in the health record, in the record. And also when you get a fever or something, all the temperatures, all those records are all there. If you get blood tests, uh, there, those records are also there. So depending on that, using that data of about this, is it possible to manage your health? That is using artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning algorithms. That is the that is the future, according to me. So what is the current health infrastructure that we have today? So this is what all of us know. This is the hospital service chain. You are a patient and you go to the hospital and you see a doctor. And before that, the doctor may say, you get the lab test, blood test, this, that, 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 and so on. And the doctor may send you to a specialist, cardiologist, whatever. And the cardiologist will give you the report. You go to the doctor again. And afterwards, you go to a uh, hospital again, and you are a treated patient here. So you are a treated patient, and sometimes they may invite a specialist. Sometimes they may invite a specialist to, uh, for, to the hospital and so on. So this is what usually happens in the hospital. And how many times do you go to the hospital physically? First go to the hospital and afterwards go to the lab and afterwards go to the doctor again and the specialist comes, you go again and you invite the specialist to go again. So for five or six times, you have to go to the hospital for getting the treatment. So, but hospital is not hospital service chain. Whatever you are doing here is not just the hospital and the doctors. As I said, the business, business hospital business or the, the, the uh, healthcare business is 10 or 20 times the hospital. How? Let us see that. Supposing there is a patient and there is what is called a patient portal. That is, you go to the, uh, uh, to the hospital and uh, there is the uh, fellow who will say, and he'll say, uh, you will see the patient goes to the patient portal and they will record whatever you have. And depending on what you want, they may send you for clinical lab, which may be inside the hospital or outside. And then it will all go to the doctor and staff. And afterwards, there is a pharma suppliers and so on. You go and collect the medicines. And there are insurance bills if you have insurance and so on. And afterwards, it will go to ambulance and transport if you are to be transported to, uh, uh, to uh, some, some other place. And otherwise, the, the patient goes out and so on. So if you look at the hospital ecosystem, there is the patient portal. It uh, uh, a place where you go and register yourself in the hospital. There are doctors, staff, there are insurance companies, and there is the ambulance and transport, and there are specialty hospitals, pharma suppliers, clinical labs, but of course there are also the medical equipment like CT scans, uh, CT uh, scans, then ECG machines and all that. And there is also the hospital need to be regularly maintained, treated, and so on. So that is a cleaning and other things, maintenance of the hospital, that is another thing. So if you add all the things that are needed uh, for the, to maintain a hospital, this, all these things come into picture. Now, what as a patient, now who will travel through all this? You travel through this as a patient, you pay to the hospital, uh, then go to the insurance, apply for uh, the, uh, submit the bills to the insurance, then they will pay you and so on and all that. But is it possible to make the whole thing digital? In other words, you go only 
once or twice when your presence is necessary. Or if it is not necessary, you need not have to go at all, but all these things can be done digitally by using audio, video technologies at all that. Is it possible to do that? So that is the one that uh, we are talking about in terms of the digital platforms. So what are the kinds of diseases in India? There are two kinds of diseases. One is non-infectious non diseases, which is the blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, asthma, cataract, heart diseases, etc. And India has this high percentage of these diseases still last year. And they are infectious diseases caused by pathogens like uh, uh, the bacteria, viruses, pathogens, and so on. And uh, one of the things that we are suffering today is the COVID uh, co coronavirus. So in the connected world, in the connected world, diseases, infectious diseases spread very quickly. Cholera, chickenpox, malaria, SARS, COVID-19. This COVID-19 is highly infectious and has spread worldwide. So it, if it may have started wherever it is, it has started, but now it is all over the world wherever. How did it spend? It's because people travel, people go from one place to the other and, and so on. So that's where uh, the spread is there and so on. There is one doctor in India. The problem is there is one doctor for every 15,000 people and two thirds of the doctors practice in urban areas, whereas rural population is almost 80%. So what I've, I'm going to do in the next slide is what is the hospital ecosystem? How do you see the current hospital? So there is a reception center where the patient goes in and it goes through medical consultation and then diagnostic tests, pharma companies, pharmacies, maintenance of hospitals and equipment, right? These are all the things that the service chain, one. you can add some more if you have. And there is resources that are needed. What are the resources that uh, are needed here? The resources are, the resources are medical diaries uh, here, and doctors and staff and so on, and diagnostic centers, hospitals, and billing, revenues, insurance, reimbursement, medical equipment, and pharmacy. And the institutions that are there are R&D labs, hospitals, insurance, and state and central government, medical associations, and so on. And finally, how do you deliver the health care? It can be through telehealth, medicines, treatment, surgery, hospitalization of equipment, wards, clinical tests, and so on. So this is the, if you, what I call the hospital ecosystem. We may, not, we may go and see only the hospitals and maybe the insurance company and the payment systems and so on, but you have all these things which are coming when you are doing a design and when you want to uh, control something, then you should know about the entire ecosystem. Now, what are the new innovations that are changing in the uh, healthcare sector? There are new technologies. For example, this is, uh, you may see uh, this picture, the doctor is on the, on the computer, he is trying to check uh, over this one. A lot of people, they are not, uh, they're not uh, uh, like this and so on. So, so the mobile internet connecting with the patients, electronic medical records, Electronic pill contains sensors and collect information as it travels through gastrointestinal tract. You know, in the stuff uh, doing all the this one cloud, which is healthcare data storage, 3D printing. That is, 
they customize the medical equipment like bones and other things are uh, printed using 3D printing and so on. And other technologies are longitudinal patient records, a lifelong increment process, which each clinical encounter is updated in this. The standard terms are used at a cradle to grave and womb to tomb. These are the people, the things that they uh, use. You have everything in the longitudinal record. Of course, blockchain to secure storage of patient and health info. You must have heard that during the COVID time also the vaccinations, when they were invented, uh, the sites like Pfizer and, and others and Dr. Reddy's, they were there were a lot of cyber attacks on this, uh, on this one. So secure storage of patient health, uh, health information is used in blockchain. Drones, they deliver medicine, blood, and even organs to the hospital. You know, like, uh, you know, they, they're not only groceries and other things, so they can deliver blood medicine, and even organs. And robot-assisted surgeries are done in private hospitals now, and they are more precise and less famous. So basically, there are a lot of other technologies that are used. I just want to give some examples so that, you know, to tell you that these new technologies are already in this one. And if you go to New Zealand, Australia, and any of these mid uh, countries like uh, in Europe, there and US, of course, are all there. And you use IOMT, that is Internet of Medical Things. And AI, Internet of Medical Things is a network of medical devices that feed vital time, real time information to health IT systems. So you can have badges uh, in some things which are located in the heart and so on and all that, all that information is taken into the healthcare systems. So connecting medical devices such as ultrasound, thermometers, glucose monitors, ECGs for tracking patients' overall health. And there are smart beds in the hospital with no nurses. You can have hospital and you know the patient probably can do uh, something he can put on a fan, he can uh, remove the curtain or something, whatever, and ask for food. Everything that can be done by uh, this one using in the hospital, they are smart beds. Yeah, it helps precise diagnosis using large set of clinical data and images of cancer, chronic conditions such as diabetes, cholesterol, cardiac health treatment, and so on. So and NLP, that is natural language processing and artificial intelligence health processing invoices, bills, and other documents. As I said earlier, that the healthcare ecosystem consists of a lot of billing and documents, invoices, bills, and so on. And all those things are currently handled uh, by uh, the departments. And there are lots of uh, uh, delays and all that, but they can all be processed using natural language and ES processing. And this is a very well-known stuff in the uh, business literature. So what is the big data analytics to make the decisions? You know, how do you, what are the decisions that you make? One is descriptive. You know, once you give the data, it says what has happened. You know, somebody has a heart attack, somebody has COVID, whatever. And diagnostic, why did it happen? Did he, this fellow has touched anybody? Or, uh, you know, how did he, this one, he's eating wrong food, whatever. The diagnostics, uh, this one, depending on the data. Predictive, what is going to happen if you don't do the surgery? What is going to happen? It's going to then heart attack or whatever. And prescriptive. How can we optimize all these things and adopt it? How do we learn from this for the future? So basically, the medical data decisioning, it involves inferencing from large volumes of data from IOMT, Internet of Medical Things, medical imaging, genomics, patient's behavior, 
if everything is there in your and your electronic health records, he drinks, he smokes, whatever is there, all these things, and he travels a lot, all, and all these things are information is there, and that is the big data analytics to make the decisions. Now, what is the big problem here? How do I collect the data? And what is the data? How do I know what data that is needed in this? So that becomes a big problem in, in terms of this one. So when you're using, when you're automating the decision making instead of the, the doctors or whatever, the, the analysts should tell what is the data that they should be collected depending on the patient's um, uh, requirement and so on. So what is digital healthcare? Digital healthcare market, you know, now today is telehealth, that is remote health, M health using mobile, electronic health records, and medical records, remote diagnosis, healthcare analytics, and so on. So these are all the kinds of things that we are talking about. The M health segment, that is the mobile health segment, is expected to dominate the market. Fitness track and monitor daily activities and so on because you can have uh, all the watches, watches and all that, they will track uh, all kinds of things. So, advancements of mobile health include lab plans that track health in real time. Scheduling doctor's appointments using a mobile app, providing reports online, over a video call, carrying medical history and reports in a healthcare portal on your smartphone. Now you carry your uh, uh, this one in a book. Now that becomes. Uh, you, can, you carry all this in the digital healthcare. So what is telemedicine market? Telemedicine is the most promising solution and it is largely dominated by teleradiology today. It involves electronic transmission of patients, radiographic images like X-rays, CT scans, MRIs from one location to another location for interpretation and teleconsulting is audio video communication between the patient and the doctor. Tele-ICUs has been regarded as the third largest category in the telemedicine market in India. This is IC, uh, ICUs with this one. And not only ICUs, the world better homes uh, where uh, you know the world people, they stay there and so on. Their health as well as uh, their requirements are taken care of. So there are a lot of Medicare startups, 5,000 startups in India. Digital health and technology is fueled by capital investments. 53% uh, of angel investments were made in healthcare in India in 2019. In the first quarter of 2020, this has gone to witness 21 deals and US 452 million. I'm giving this information for youngsters who are looking for this one. Some big deals are Cure Kit and Healthcare Global Enterprises and so on. So if you look at uh, the slide, there are digital health, there are a lot of uh, startups in digital health. Now, what happens is if you are talking of a business, then if you have a hospital, what does the hospital consist of? Now, hospital has a big building, doctors, staff, and all that. That is becomes, oh, why do you say this is a good hospital? Well, it is a good doctor. And he has uh, this one, it has very good rooms and all that and so on. But now, it is different. Cross-industry partnerships in hospitals. There are services, cloud, software operating systems, insurances, telecom connectivity, uh, app, app, app platforms, APIs, and so on, so on, and the, and the people, doctors, and all that. So if you 
go now, if you want to judge a digital hospital, you judge it by how the connectivity around, how the cloud platform stores the big data here, and what are the other services that you can get, telehealth, mHealth, and so on, and all that. And what is the hardware technology that uh, it has, and so on. So the if your business angle of uh, the hospital changes a lot by looking at this stack. So if you want to look at uh, India, the National uh, Digital Health Machine in August 20, the, uh, uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare established National Digital Health Machine to provide uh, uh, support uh, for integration of digital healthcare. And the mission is to create digital infrastructure, health IDs, that is ID uniquely identify people, digital doctors, a comprehensive repository of all the doctors practicing and teaching. So we don't have this right now. And health, health facility registry, patient health records, electronic medical records, a digital health version of patient treatment history from a single facility. So basically these are all the things that they want to machine. So now let us go back to whatever our aim here is to talk of platform business models. So what, uh, you know, this is a definition. I'm sorry if uh, you guys are not familiar with this. If you have a business, if you take Amazon or Uber or something, it has what is called an ecosystem. I mean, the hospital ecosystem, I have shown the diagram where you have not only, not only patients, doctors, and, and so on, and nurses, but there are other things like uh, the various things, pharmacies, medical equipment manufacturers, all these things come into picture. Now, business ecosystem is a network of independent companies working together to gain comparative advantage through symbiotic relationships. That is, they're all independent companies. You, have, you may have uh, somebody who is doing the clinical tests, the pharmacies, companies, all these things are independent companies, but you are working uh, to, you work together to make uh, this one. This is like if you take Amazon, you may be selling a, a, a smartphone, but you are selling through Amazon. Uh, uh, that's it. So basically, it forms an ecosystem. So network consists of hospitals, pharma manufacturers. They are what are called complementers who will provide. Uh, these facilities for the hospitals and doctors, di diagnostic labs, pharmacies, startups, and so on, and home care providers, social media, R&D labs, medical schools, yoga gym centers, government agencies, patients, etc., deliver healthcare products and services through both competition and cooperation. Now, what is competition? Co-optation is both cooperation as well as competition. Why competition? That is, I may be working with a digital hospital in Bangalore, another digital hospital in Hyderabad and so on. So it doesn't matter, I can work with anybody. This is like Samsung sells through Amazon, through Flipkart and so on. So it is not necessary to have one platform. And the participants share ideas, talent, and capital throughout the system. So this is the business ecosystem, which is applicable to, to any, it need not have to be healthcare, it is applicable to retail, it is applicable to manufacturing and so on. So, and this is the general definition for healthcare. So if you look at uh, the healthcare ecosystem, there are life sciences who develop the clinical development, transaction services, claims and so on and all that for uh, uh, this one, public private partners and employees, public health, all these things becomes regulators, everybody comes becomes a part of uh, the healthcare ecosystem. So what is a platform business model? So business model is a conceptual tool and a description of how company does that business. Supposing you want to start a platform healthcare 
system. So a platform, you may not have all the things, but you want to connect to all the people. You want to bring in all the labs, all the people who are needed in this one, owners of the platform control their intellectual property and the governance. Because if I'm a health, it's a healthcare problem, and then the patient believes in me and he comes uh, to my platform, then I should control his intellectual property. Complement uh, service providers, hospitals, everybody, core actors such as producers, clinical labs, and so on and several segments of customers use their offering. So basically this is a business, uh, this one. And healthcare platform here is what I call the actor network, patient portal, hospitals, pharma companies, medical equipment manufacturers, and diagnostic labs, and software and other insurance companies and so on. You can see that these are all independent companies. They work with several healthcare platforms. They can work with several healthcare platforms because the same insurance company works with several others and so on. So, the, uh, and if you look at uh, if you look at uh, these are regulators. Uh, uh, this one, I have somehow this hospitals and so on. There are regulators which are involved. And here, yoga centers, health record uh, manufacturers, and software R&D, market intelligence, mobile internet, tech incentive, human uh, financial resources, revenue management, and so on. And your delivery is telemedicine, patient partner building, medical medicines and health service delivery, home care, patients and so on. And you finally have what is called a control tower. Now I'm going to, uh, probably I don't know whether I have this slide here. Control tower is basically, it detects what are the kinds of diseases that are going to come. Because the healthcare platform has a lot of information, a lot of patients who are coming. And there can be a background digital uh, infrastructure or digital software, which will say, depending on how many people are coming with COVID disease, how many people are coming with, uh, with uh, uh, how many people are coming with heart attack, how many people are coming with the diabetes and so on. So why is this happening? Where is this happening? Is it uh, because is it all uh, IT people are getting this disease or is it because uh, people who are traveling getting this disease? Is it possible to do that kind of analysis to do the uh, control tower business? So that control tower for healthcare, it becomes, it is a futuristic all right, but it is becomes very important. So platform, uh, products offers, uh, what does the platform offers to the clients? Who are the clients for the platform? Everybody is a client here. That is not the patients. It is the API software providers, other hospitals, the pharma companies, and then uh, the medical equipment manufacturers. These are all uh, uh, platform uh, offers. They are all becomes clients. and. And what is the domain knowledge and in the number and depth? How, 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 how do you design a platform? I design a platform, I should know about healthcare first. That is the domain knowledge. And the depth of relationships, including the government. I should know all the hospitals, all the pharmacies, all the clinical labs, everybody. And then I should be able to connect with them. So it becomes now, if I am a, a vertically integrated company, uh, like a manufacturer of autos, of auto uh, cars or something, then it is in the manufacturing quality and all that. But here it is in the network relationships and knowledge that becomes important here. It is not uh, your, uh, it is not anymore, 
Uh, you have this one. Platform assets are hard to copy. Now, because whenever you are starting a business, uh, you should be worried about your competition. So your assets are hard to copy or the community, partner, network, patients, resources, its members, owner, contribute, be the hospitals, data, analytics, and ideas, and partners in the network are mutually dependent, good performance by one was success of the other. That's why ultimately it is the partners who, are, who have to say, yes, you are doing good is the patients and the other partner should be making money and so on. So it is all mutually dependent. And platform provides assets for its partners to grow their business and engage this one. Supposing you are a startup, what does the platform give you? Platform gives you the data from all this. And it will give you, once you give the algorithms, it will give you a way to test your, uh, whatever algorithms you are giving and so on. So that you can use to, uh, to, uh, uh, to promote yourself and so on. So basically these are the kinds of things that uh, the startups need and that is given here. And similarly for medical, equipment manufacturers, it will tell you the medical equipment, uh, this one, the repair, maintenance, everything is, is done through these platforms and so on. It will not be not for one hospital, but to several hospitals. So, but how do you control such kind of things? Because all of us know if you have a hospital, then there is a, a chief surgeon or chief, uh, uh, this one CEO who will control all this. He knows what are the branches and so on. If you have any problem, you go to them. All the, uh, the other thing is uh, the finance, everything is controlled by him. But here, a separate healthcare supply chain is formed for each patient. For each patient, depending on whatever is required, he is asked to go to this, to the clinical center, to this, to uh, to this hospital and so on. And that is formed for each patient. And the chain partner selection is based on whatever the capabilities. If somebody has a heart problem, then it depends, it will go into that particular hospital with those capabilities and relationship, staff, government, telehealth, and so on. And coordination, determining who does what and when. In other words, when the patient comes, what does he do? When he goes to the um, uh, to the hospital to for he does his ECG clinical tests, whatever are done, is all determined when and commenting to everyone is all scheduling is done by this fellow and execution, monitoring order status and the process and so on. So the patient travel through the entire one is monitored by uh, this governance structure. And this is done, uh, for example, if you look at uh, Amazon, Amazon knows, or Flipkart, Flipkart knows when you order something, whether it is delivered or not, whether the customer has rejected, he's not there, everything is known. And this monitoring is done by this one that is called governance. So what in the business literature, a platform is called an orchestrator. Orchestrator, you must have seen in the music. You know, he doesn't play violin or anything like that. He just does the tapping. And that is what this platform is doing. And a patient goes, a patient to soft apps and pharma, mental health, hospital diagnostics, home care, insurance billing, and several others is being managed by the platform. So that is what the platform does. So for every patient, platform selects the partners, allocates the tasks and responsibilities, forms the network and monitors the execution. And this requires, of course, a lot of software apps and so on. So basically, and this telemedicine, home care, insurance, billing, revenue management, these are all done through this. So I mean, this is the patient, and this is what is called the service chain. That is 
a part the patient goes through. So partner matching, you know, telling you go to this hospital or you go to this clinical lab and so on, and coordination and execution of all this. And there can be the software that is developed for all this. If you are a software company, then this becomes um, uh, an issue for your this one. And the healthcare service chain has flow of pharma, goods, equipment, as well as information and financial place. All these flows have risks. There is a risk associated. Existing medical practitioners provide face-to-face -face personal communication and have established patient base and goodwill. Because a lot of patients, you can see that everybody is saying, I want to have face-to-face -face communication and all that. And customers have hesitancy for telemedicine. Patients choose to physical touch of a familiar doctor, do not feel the same level of comfort and confidence with a white coat stranger on the screen. That is true. Platform and telemedicine players need time and effort to build trust in the community to overcome this challenge. And the doctors are also very hesitant because they are not seeing the doctors. They are basically giving uh, the decisions online and so on. Telemedicine requires uninterrupted power, internet, backup with battery generators is needed because in India, particularly in villages, then you want to give this. So cybersecurity is another issue because there are a lot of ransomware attacks that hit hospitals and healthcare. Hackers conduct phishing attacks on healthcare companies and steal data and information and ransomware attacks can shut down IT system and slow down operations of hospitals and so on. So these are the new kind of attacks that people are doing, I mean, that can be done. Denial of service attacks, that is basically web server is temporarily available, unavailable and so on. So future hospitals could use control towers to predict and determine their service operations, clinical procedure needs using predictive analytics. So like in the aircraft, you have a control tower, like for transportation, you have a control tower, you should can have a control tower depending on the data that you have and the patients who are coming here and also you are, uh, from the other hospitals, you can determine the, what are the future services. For example, in the COVID case, you know, oxygen cylinder shortage, ICU shortage and all that. Is it possible to predict the clinical and procedural needs using predictive analytics and do this before so other than, you know, rushing for uh, these equipment, ICUs and so on. So, So traditional innovation is discovery, manufacturing, marketing, and products. Open innovation uses successful innovations created in the same and cross industry markets. That is what needed innovation. Telemedicine for specific surgery of village town. Procedural kits can be rented, which supposing a surgeon has to go to a village for a tele surgery. Then, we can be rent the, this one with full support service, transportation, the cleaning of the instruments before and after surgery and also. Also, one can also learn from Aravind High Hospital, a company that provides cheap eye care, eye surgery through a network of hospitals in India. This, this is basically runs like a platform. And digital hospital can create intermediaries in the villages because one of the problems that uh, people have is the patients want face-to-face -face con uh, uh, consultation and doctors seeing the doctor's face, something. So that you can have in the villages, you can have uh, our districts, nurses, paramedical staff, doctors, and so on, so that the patient feel comfortable deal with online doctors. That is what is done in what is called each opal in ITC has with the farmers. 
So platform can have annual meetings with partners and customers. So, because otherwise you don't know, you don't meet anybody. And this is what is happening with most of the educational institutions and with the students and so on. So you, you, at least the uh, platforms can have annual meetings with partners and customers and so on. So, I think that's all. So, open innovation, future uh, business models for healthcare. Uh, yeah. Yeah, digital tax are disrupting healthcare landscape, data, connected devices, telehealth, and so on. Consumers demand transparency. Future, digital health records, online medical consultations, smart hospitals, and so on, using big data analytics. So India needs healthcare service revolution, streamline technologically operated healthcare services. That is a big problem currently. Initiate education, research, entrepreneurial programs in the healthcare sector. Produce healthcare practitioners, not medical practitioners. Re-innovate pharma manufacturing and smart food. Plan, build integrated service systems, smart medical cities, smart healthcare villages, smart startup ecosystems, and so on. Develop governance models for resilience operation and execution of digital healthcare. And there is one, I don't know, you must have heard of this. There is a, a scientist called Solo. He was an economic scientist. In 1997, he got a Nobel Prize. And how is paradox? He says, we see transformative new technologies everywhere, but not in the productive statistics. So this is what I said when I started with the industry 1.0 to 2.0 and so on. They, it takes time for any new technologies to get into the analytics and et cetera. It will take time uh, for this one. And that is what happens. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I can answer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for so much information within one hour. Uh, you have uh, taken us through whole journey of healthcare. We have a couple of questions. There's one question from Rajiv Shore. What is the future of medical insurance? What is the future of medical? What is the future of medical insurance? Uh, uh, do you envisage a future where the insurance agencies are likely to decline insurance? Yeah, actually, medical insurance is going to become like uh, car insurance, like car insurance in other countries. It depends on the patient. You know, for example, now medical insurance is the same for everybody and so on. Now it can be the insurance could be patient dependent. A, B, the insurance and the hospitals could uh, uh, work together so that the patient is not involved in the patient in the in this one, and uh, the hospitals can directly charge the uh, this one. So medical insurance companies will be there, but they have to transform themselves. Okay. It has yeah. to be patient dependent. So it has to be data dependent. In other words, what should the patient help and what are the, the health records say? Depending on that, you can charge this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, we have a second question. Are there any standards or regulations for collecting patients' data with privacy preservation, especially in India? No, but right now there is there is a uh, uh, there are regulations that you cannot share the data and so on. Uh, but most of the hospitals don't uh, share the, the data. They don't uh, give they give only paper copies to you. Uh, you know all the images and and all that. So there are regulations which the hospitals follow, but. 
how do you basically, when you have a platform, how do you, the, the cloud should have, uh, you know, the, the data has to be stored uh, very safely and they should, should be accessible. I mean, through like edge computing and all that, it should be accessible to only the people uh, that are necessary. So there is technology improvements in data that is needed before the data can be shared with, with all these people. Now, for example, uh, you know, there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, in IITs and IAS and all that, you, uh, you get uh, these ID cards. Now they are giving digital ID cards. And if somebody hacks the ID, then you they know everything about you, your phone number, everything and so on. So this is same thing with the health records. So one of the reasons why mm -hmm. people are not going digital is because of uh, the security issues. Yeah, that's true. Yes, correct. Yeah. So uh, you have you know, a couple of compliments that uh, very compressive and uh, appreciate your presentation like that. And uh, the question is, uh, what could be the role of chains of hospitals in the framework that you have presented? Role of what? Uh, chain of hospitals, hospitals chain. Role of big hospitals, chairman. Chain, chain. Miss number of uh, uh, the branches you had discussed, you know, like hospital chain can be there. Uh, hospital chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that's right. I mean, a lot of these hospitals like Apollo and others are trying to, um, uh, you know, work with uh, some of the IT companies and so on. But uh, uh, the hospital chains are, are important. They can do it. But they, for example, you take any hospital and not necessarily the chain, this one chain, the hospital in Bangalore or Hyderabad or in Bombay or something. That, that hospital has connections with all the people, uh, the manufacturers, uh, then uh, the clinical labs and, 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 manu and everybody. Yeah, uh, so thank you, sir. Uh, there is uh, one question currently. Good evening, sir. Are there any efforts on uniformity in healthcare data representations for interoperability? Actually, this is one thing that I mean, I wanted to suggest this one of the there are a lot of research problems for particularly for uh, 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 SEM members. That is, how do, how do you collect the data? What is the uh, data standards, uh, what data do you collect, uh, and, and so on. So I, do, I, I am not sure, I am not a data scientist, so I'm not sure whether there are any, any standards, but there are data standards, but for healthcare data, I don't know whether there are any standards. Maybe they have to be developed. All these ISO and other things are all there, but uh, that is only for sharing the data and so on. Interoperability, is uh, exists now among some companies softwares when you create an api or something for for all this they 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 are interoperable but uh, i don't know for data sharing whether they are using or they can use it right now but a uh, lot of companies like amazon google and others they take the data they use the data for their own purpose. For example, all of us know that Google gives us email, which is free. But when you when you well, that takes all the data from you and then sells it to somebody else. So even the hospitals will have not only the patient money, they will have the data that can be obtained through the control towers and others that can be used as uh, uh, for for selling or for their own research and so on. Yes, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, next question is again from Rajiv. He is asking you, when are you writing a book on digital health? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, I mean, if I, I'm this digital health, uh, I have written a paper 
and uh, that paper I can share with you guys. Uh, 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 this one, <laughs> it is it is going to get published in Sadhana. Sadhana is the academic journal of uh, Indian Academy of Sciences. I was editor in chief of Sadhana for a long time, so I thought this paper, which is very important for India, it should it should go to Sadhana, and. Uh, uh, so that paper can be shared to, to anybody, but uh, that is only 20, 25 pages. But I have this presentation, which I can share, but I have spent a lot of time last uh, six, eight months going through a lot of uh, this particular data and so on. If anybody has any specific questions, want any data, any literature because I don't, I'm not a doctor. I don't work on this uh, hospitals and so on. If you want any literature and all that, what is happening in India, I can certainly provide uh, and help. If you have a startup, I can help you to get the business model and all that. It is all free because I am an NGO for startups. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much, sir. It is, it is well seen from your presentation that your efforts and uh, all like insightful content that is uh, well seen from the presentation. We have one more question from Priti Jain. Uh, sir, nice session. My question is that it is mostly observed that during road accidents in unreachable areas, severity increases due to delay in reaching hospitals for urgent treatment. So how in future technologies model helpful to make the facility of emergency treatment for such unattended road accidents? Yeah, but road and not only road accidents, I mean, the heart attacks and all that, you know, anything, any emergency. Most of the hospitals have emergency, uh, uh, this one, but you can have a, a a platform for emergency, this one, because these are all increasing now, uh, the road accidents and all that. And I mean, in terms of road accidents, what happens is where the accident, what are the usual, the data that is needed is then the, depending on the road accident, what are the kind of things that the patient needs? A healthy patient driving a car or something, then he gets into an accident. Is it head injury or is it bones or is it what is this? I mean, that kind of data is, is needed. And depending on that, I always tell this uh, uh, to the emergency, this one. So if you have, say, instead of taking somebody to the hospital and that hospital says, no, we are dealing not dealing with this bone surgery or heart, this one, we please take him to some other areas. If you have the uh, ambulances, which have this kind of trait, this one, they can detect what is the kind of accident, what is the kind of treatment that is needed, which are the hospitals that are there in nearby or anywhere, and they can call and go to those hospitals. So, yeah, yes. so, so that will save a lot of time and life. Yes, sir. Really uh, appreciate it. should have intelligent, intelligent ambulances. Right, right. I think uh, when IIT is working on ambulance is the project. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, it's Kadakpur. I feel ambulance is that uh, is the project name, and they have smart ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in that we are moving in that direction now. We can say yes. So all the questions are over from the audience. Um, so now I would like to thank Dr. Viswanadam for an excellent informative talk and answering all the questions. And uh, the really uh, session was really engaging, insightful, and informative. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming and thanks for enlightening all of us. Thanks to all of you for attending this webinar. Please look forward for announcements of our next webinar and do visit for the ACM India initiatives and some conferences like God's Comad, uh, Comad is coming up and it has announcements of scholarships and uh, some participation. So have a look at website as well. So thank you. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye.
Yeah, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, I think for attending this talk and so on. If you have any questions, uh, I have given my email on the, this one. I can also share my paper as well as my uh, uh, my slides with you and to Chitra and Gitanjali and so on and all that. And thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, for making this presentation to the this one. I don't know if there are any startups here. It should it should help them to to think think big about uh, this. Sir, uh, we will again uh, maybe I'll be interested to conduct this kind this workshop this session again on the larger.